just by two minutes, I've encoded. I was dead. This is me. The best day of my life turned into the worst day of my life. On August 17th, 2015, we were supposed to give birth to a beautiful baby boy. And we were excited and we were, we were happy. Um, I went to the doctor. We were gonna meet our baby boy for the first time. And it was so exciting. Um, so we went upstairs, um, went into the labor hall, started the inducing process. Um, I had high blood pressure, so I mean, during my pregnancy, I danced, I'm a dance teacher, you know, and, and I was very healthy. But the last five weeks of my pregnancy, I started having really high blood pressure. So <clears throat> that's what sent me upstairs to the labor hall. Um, so we, were, we started the inducing process, um, medicine and um, getting the Pitocin and all of that. And so the pain then started. The... Uh, the contractions and they they came in and gave me medicine for um, for the pain and that's when everything started to go wrong I had pain in my head the worst pain I've ever had in my entire life I was very scared and I thought I was dying so the doctor in God's timing the, the doctor rushed into the room. My blood pressure ran up to 225 over 115. And, you know, this really scared them. So we, you know, noticed also that the baby's heart rate was going down to 240. Um, so they rushed me to an emergency C-section. The last thing that, that I remember was, you know, the frantic conversations, um, keep calm, keep calm, and, and, um, you know, saying goodbye to my husband. And uh, so I remember being rushed down a hallway and basically just seeing lights looking up at the ceiling. And I was very afraid that I was going to, that I was not going to make it. I was very afraid for my baby. But there was a moment that but I stopped as I was being wheeled down into, into surgery. That, that I was like, God, please, I just, please, please give me peace about this, Lord. I can't do it. I can't do it without you. So please give me some peace about this situation. If I'm supposed to make it, Lord, allow me to make it. You know, fight for me, but... If I'm supposed to, if, if this is my time, if I'm supposed to go, I'm ready. And I think in that very moment that I said, I'm ready for whatever you want, that's when it all began. And so that was basically the last thing that I remember. Um, it just kind of seemed like everything went black after that, you know, being thrown onto the table and everything just went black. Um, in those moments, um, obviously, during the surgery, I was completely out and I was intubated. Um, and Oliver was was obviously born, and he um, he was very weak. He was he was limp on a survival rate from one to ten, one being the worst. He was a number one. He was very limp. He was not supposed to make it, and yet he was sent to the NICU. Um, during their time of stabilizing my son, they actually had all of their attention drawn to him because they were focusing on him. He was, he was the one, you know, they thought the reason that, that he was having such a hard time was not because of me. So, you know, they, they were taking care of him. And two minutes after my son was born, I was pronounced dead. My, my heart had stopped. And a code went over the speaker. Um, my husband wasn't even in the room, but my family all heard the code. Um, this was very scary for them from what I've heard um, because they weren't sure if it was the baby or if it was me. And, you know, it, it was very hard for them. Um, after being revived the first time, 
um, with chest compressions and the shock to my chest, they then rushed me to ICU. In the ICU, I was there for 10 minutes and I died again. They then revived me and this time took a little bit longer. I, I heard that there were nurses and staff and doctors standing inside my room in this tiny little ICU room screaming and praying, Abby, come on, fight. Sorry. I can't I'm afraid. I and I cry. And this is me today. I'm alive. I'm here. And I'm a miracle. My God had other plans for me. He had other plans for my son. He's here. We're all healthy and and progressing and um, dealing every day with what happened back 10 months ago, but we know that we have a purpose. We know that God has purpose for our life, and I'm so happy that I can sit here and tell everyone that that God still performs miracles and that He's He's not going to give up on you, that you, you have to believe that He can turn your life around in a split second because that's what he did for me. That's what he did for my son. And that's what he's done for my family. I spent seven days in the ICU at St. Joseph Hospital with the doctors telling me that I had a heart disease that I knew nothing about. My family knew nothing about. My doctors before knew nothing about, um, which that is something that I am dealing with every day. I'm recovering from that, and it's called cardiomyopathy perpartum. My chances of survival were one out of 150,000. You can't tell me that that's not a miracle. That these these doctors that that helped save my life, they knew that they believed that God could turn the situation around and that he could he could save my life. My son's survival rate was one out of out of 10 and that was he was dying. We we both were dying. I died and he saved he saved our life. On my fifth day being in the ICU, they put me on oxygen um, and took me off the ventilator. I was slowly starting to breathe better on my own. It was very challenging, but um, my nurses took me down to the NICU and sent me down in the middle of the night to meet my son for the very first time. It was the most amazing thing I've ever experienced in my entire life, seeing my son for the first time. I have purpose. My son has purpose. And we are figuring out what that purpose is every single day of our life. But life is precious, and you must live every single day as if it were your last. Now I can go